Hi, my name is Kent Lee and I teach computer science at Luther College. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can make decisions in Python programs. Decisions are uh, generally implemented using what are called if statements, and, uh, and sometimes it's called selection within our, our program. But the important thing is, is that Python programs and programs in general can make decisions based on user input. And interesting programs typically do make decisions, lots of decisions within them. So if we're going to make a decision in a program, we're going to need something called an if statement. And an if statement has this kind of form. Um, generally, there are some statements that come before the if statement, and those are, are just written before it. Then we have if, the word if, followed by some condition. And in Python, we put a colon after it and then indented inside of this if statement. So this is the then statements here are still part of the if statement um, because they're indented inside of them. And indentation, it turns out, is very important in Python. So we want to pay attention to how things are indented in our program. So these then statements are the then statements because they are indented under the if statement. And there may be more than one of these. And then finally, there are some statements that just come after the if statement typically um, in a program. So, um, and you notice that those are not indented. Another way of looking at this is to look at what's called a flow diagram. And this flow diagram here shows us um, how uh, your program flows, how the, uh, the, the point of execution within your program would flow. So you'd have some statements before the if statement. And then you'd come in and you'd check your condition in the if statement. And if the condition is true, we branch over here and do the then statements. And then when we're done, we just follow to the statements that are after the if statement. If the condition is false, we just go straight to the statements that are after the if statement. So I can demonstrate this pretty quickly for you. Um, let's just say that we have a program where we want to find the maximum value um, in our uh, in of some of a couple of numbers. So let's say we've got x is equal to, and let's say we're going to deal with integers here, so x is equal to the int of input um, of uh, please enter an integer. And uh, we'll do the same thing for y so that we have two integers to work with. And I can use single or double quotes. I'll use single this time just so you can see either one works. And then if I want to check to see which one is greater, I can just say if uh, x is greater than y. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and print x uh, is greater than um, y. So if I have that kind of situation here, and let me do one more statement here just so we have something after the if statement. We don't have to have a statement after the if statement, but uh, in this case, I'm going to put something there just so we can see what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and run this now. And when I run it, um, I get, uh, let's, let's enter 5 and 4, for example. And I see that it prints 5 is greater than 4, and then it prints done. Um, let me run it again here and enter 5 and 5 this time. So this time I entered the two fives there and it just printed done. Um, and it printed done because if we look at this program up here, x is not greater than y. So since x is not greater than y, it is not going to execute the then statement. It's just going to go on to the uh, statement that's after, after it to the done. <coughs> I can in, I can print more than one thing inside or do more than one thing inside of an if statement if I would like to. Um, so for example, I could say uh, uh, print uh, u1, for example, if I was going to make this some kind of a game here where I had to always enter a greater number first. And so I can see here that I, I have two statements now, two then statements inside of my if statement. Okay. Well, this is interesting. Um, it turns out there's another form of if. If I really want to find the maximum of these two integers, um, I can use a different form of if that will actually make it a little easier for me to, to, uh, to find the maximum of two integers. And 
And to do that, I want to use something called a, uh, um, an if-then-else statement. So an if-else statement has this form. An if-else statement uh, goes if some condition, then some statements, else, some else statements, and then we have the statements that would come afterwards. And the flow diagram for that looks something like this. We have some statements before. We have a condition. If the condition is false, we do the else statements. If the condition is true, we do the then statements. And then either way, we're going to do the statements after the if statement. So I can do that over here in my program. Um, I can print uh, that, uh, let's get rid of the u1 here. And I could add to this an else. Um, and again, I have to be careful of my indentation. The else needs to line up with the if. If I don't do that, then it doesn't Python won't know where the else belongs. So I'm going to print, in this case, um, y uh, is greater than or equal to uh, x. So let's give this a try and see what happens here. So I have uh, 5 and 4, and 5 is greater than 4. And if I have uh, 5 let's say 4 and 5, then it says 5 is greater than or equal to 4, and just trying what's called a boundary condition here. If I try right where they're equal, it says 5 is greater than or equal to 5. So in every case it printed done, um, because done is after the if statement, so that's always going to be done, and depending on the condition, one of these two values is going to be printed. Okay, well that's nice. Um, but it might be the case that I have three integers that I would like to find the maximum of. So what would we do to find the maximum of three integers? Well, let's get one more integer from the user here. Um, so we'll enter, uh, please enter an integer. And now we're going to figure out which one is the maximum of these three. Well, here I have if x is greater than y, then I know x is at least greater than the, the y part, so I probably would want to check then to see if x is greater than z. So if x is greater than z, I'm going to print that, uh, that x, um, without quotes, is the greatest. Okay, and at this point in my program, if I'm, and notice my indentation, my if is inside of this if, so this is the then part of this if statement here. So that's important for us to keep in mind here, keep the logic going and, and figure out exactly what the uh, logic of this program is. Now that we're dealing with if statements, we have some logic that's involved here. So if x is greater than y, I know x is greater, greater than y at this point, so in, when I'm indented here, x is greater than y. If x is greater than z, then I'm going to print x is the greatest. Otherwise, I'm going to print that, that uh, <coughs> I'm going to print that z is the greatest. Because x was greater than y, and z must have been greater than or equal to x, so at least it's tied, <coughs> is the greatest. Okay, now that takes care of if x is greater than y. In the else down here, we have that y is greater than or equal to x. We still don't know about z, so we're going to have to check z again. So if y is greater than z, then we're going to go ahead and print um, z is the, I'm sorry, y is the greatest. I like to put a space between commas there, so I've got my, or after commas, so there's my space. And then here I know that y is greater than x because I'm in the else, I'm in this else right here. So I know that y is greater than or equal to x. And I know from this that y, if y was greater than z, I printed that. So it must be again the case here 
that z is greater than or equal to y, so I'm going to say z is the greatest in this case. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and run this then, and we're going to see what is the greatest of three integers. So we're just going to do 5, 6, and 7, and it tells me that 7 is the greatest. Let's try it in another uh, order. Let's try 7, 6, 5, and 7 is still the greatest. Let's try another test. Let's do uh, 6, 7, Five, and it still says seven is the greatest. So I've tried three different test cases. Those are different test cases. And in each test case, I got that seven is the greatest. Now, that's a fairly complicated set of if statements here. And honestly, I would never write code like that if I wanted to find the greatest of three, uh, three integers. So um, I'm about to introduce you to a technique called the guess and check pattern and this pattern comes up over and over again in programming and I want you to pay pay careful attention here as to how this works I'm going to throw away these if statements here I've got my three integers and I'm going to go ahead and and now um, find the greatest of them using the guess and check pattern in the guess and check pattern the first thing I do is make a guess make a guess and you should always make a guess first if you're going to use a guess and check pattern so I'm gonna guess that max val is equal to and it doesn't matter which one I guess I'm gonna guess that it's equal to X so that's my guess and then I'm gonna check my guess um, against the other possible um, guesses that I could have made so if max val is uh, less than um, y, then I made a wrong guess. If my max val is less than y, then y, of course, is greater than max val. I made a wrong guess and I'm going to fix it. So max val equals y. So I'm going to make a comment right here to say fix my guess. So I make a guess, I check my guess, and I fix my guess if I made a mistake. And I'm going to do that one more time here. If max val is less than z, then I'm going to go ahead and fix my guess. Max val equals z. So again, check my guess, and if I made a mistake, fix my guess. Okay, so now if I take a look at that whole program there, if I run this again and I enter 5, 6, and 7, oops, I forgot to print my guess at the end. Got to make sure I have some output or it's kind of uninteresting. Um, max val is the greatest. So if I enter if I enter 5, 6, and 7, 7 is the greatest. If I change the order here, 7, 6, 5, 7 is the greatest. Let's try it one more time. Let's do uh, 6, 7, 5, 7 is the greatest. So I have a program here that does exactly what that last program did, um, but is much uh, nicer to look at, much less complex. I have two if statements as opposed to having the uh, three if then else statements that uh, that I had in the last one. Um, and I've used one extra variable here, max val, to avoid needing those uh, extra if then statements or if then else statements. Um, and I have a lot less indentation going on. I have just two separate if statements that are both uh, Neat, that are not indented inside of each other. So this is the guess and check pattern. I want you to make sure that you learn that guess and check pattern um, because it'll come up over and over again in problems that you want to solve uh, um, while writing computer programs.